Crusade out there. Love 
need money. No matter how much money they carry, always remember that after election they have never remembered you. There are some people that need the People's National Party. And we have a manifesto. When we come out with that manifesto, you will see that the PNP is representing those people that need the People's National Party. I show the leader of Prips of it. He said, lock it in the vault. I show the Prips, I show the chairman of Peace of it. He said, dig a hole in the vault. Cover it up, then lock it in the vault. Because the man are wealthy. They did everything that they see, including our plans and our proposals and our plans. So when I hear poor people talk about all oh, the road, the road, I like check the records. And when I look on that overhead, that Mr. Gold to treat my land, you want to the fire. That can tell our females of it. Someone that nobody can accuse, don't have any dignity and honesty. Someone that they cannot point at teams and say they were appointed by them and friends of them. Someone that will become the next prime minister and leader of this country. I want to introduce it to Dr. Peter. Peter. Central Center. And I believe by now anyone who is looking at the situation in Jamaica will understand that in the last general election, Jamaica got a six fair night. Because the reality is that the people of Jamaica 
have been betrayed by false promises that were made by the Jamaican Labour Party. Who can remember? Who can remember? When they was promising prosperity, they said that the economy was going to grow 5% in four years. They inherited it at 2% growth annually. But this year, after four years, it's going to grow less than one. So instead of going forward, they're going to go backward where economic growth is concerned. And everyone know in the country, every woman will have to go at the corner shop or go to the supermarket. That the money not stretch. That the dollar fly high and prices gone high. And your grocery can't stretch. Who remember when they was promising? They was promising to uh, sleep with your door and window open every single year. Every single year, no one year, no two year, every year with the Jamaica Labour Party. Murders have gone up more than the year before. They introduced state of emergency and murders still going up. And this year, January, murders are higher than last year, January, with all the state of emergency across the country. And I tell you, who can remember when they were promising good governance? Yes. The Prime Minister, when he was leader of the opposition, and he said they were to have a terms of job description. Job description for ministers. You have to wonder what would have been in that job description because they never get it. But certainly what we have seen is the worst example of governance ever witnessed in the history of this country. Minister fired for agencies with billions of dollars and accounting for. Petrojam, Petroscam, Nestle. Then the Minister of Education before the courts. Billions of dollars unaccounted for while people are by rum, cream and jewelry, topsy-turvy cake. Keep party on yacht with your money, the people's money. Disgrace. And at the same time, the Auditor General said 60% of the schools don't have enough desk and chair. Schools don't have book for children to read. Hospital don't have bed. When you have bed, the bed don't have no sheet. You go to hospital for free health care and them tell you say you need two hundred thousand dollar, fifty thousand dollar for get X-ray. And you have to go bring pin for your foot two hundred thousand dollar. And that is free health care is a criminal conspiracy. Denying the people of Jamaica their rights while their money is being taken away by an uncaring, irresponsible government. Scandal after scandal after scandal. Police 
you sky, the only police force in the world will order you sky. And I know them can't get it. $200,000 and no one else responsible. $200 million and no one else responsible. And remember, you know, people say corruption, corruption, corruption. Now all of a sudden the Prime Minister that was balling said Minister shouldn't come into the House of Parliament. Because of corruption, now it's a corruption is a part of our culture, is a societal problem. Nonsense! It is a part of the governance structure of the Jamaica Labour Party government. Now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Portmore, Portmore, I hear a man said the other day, so in the next term, they're going to make Portmore a priority. Well, I put it this way, in this term, Portmore has been a victim of the Jamaica Labour Party government. Portmore has been deliberately systematically victimized and sabotaged by the Jamaica Labour Party government. We left a contract to be signed for a tech park in Nagai to be managed and implemented by the Port Authority of Jamaica to enable Jamaica in the business process area and in other areas to move up into a high technology world that pay higher wages. It was abandoned. There was a scaling down and no contract, the contract that was signed and awarded, that was awarded, tendered and awarded, abandoned, and the Portmore Technology Park was abandoned by the Jamaica Labour Party. That is the first example of the victimization of Portmore by the Jamaica Labour Party. We also left in place plans, designs, and financing for a transportation center for JUTC for Portmore. Again, the minute them come in, they abandon it. Nothing. People of Portmore have to continue to stand up in a hot sun and rain to take JUTC. They run down the JUTC service till they can't get the bus. If you're away from bus of Portmore, Portmore has been made a victim of the Jamaica Labour Party administration. <laughs> And then when it comes to crime, when it comes to crime, not only has their failure of policy victimized Portmore, but the policy with the state of emergency that they put in victimized the people of Portmore. And hear what I mean when I say victimized. Because one of the things that we understand about this approach that they have to states of emergency is that it is hardest on the poorest. So if you have a big name brand fast food arrangement you open till all of us. But if you are trying to hustle with your pan chicken you have to lock down 8 o'clock you have to come on. 
But even the way them do it, even the way them do it, even the big fast food chain have to lock down early. Because them, the people have said, since you have to go eat, might as well them buy them food at home before them come over. So if you get a little work in the pharmacy, or you get a little work at the fast food place, them cut down for the hour. And so the money where the circulator get less and less. If you keep a big thousand dollar, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollar state show, it can open up. But if you try to do your own robbing, and you can't dance, you feel like it down. If you have your set up, if you have your set up for your loved ones, you have to lock it down. If you have your birthday party to celebrate with your friend, and you have try hustle it or something to sell your people go to school with it, you have to lock it down. Fort Moore has been victimized by the Jamaica Labour Party administration. So you hear me now? You have a mission. You have a responsibility. If you want to end the victimization, East Central St. Catherine need to send Dr. Winston Delahaye to Park House so we can correct the past. I asked the General Secretary to give me a list of the first time candidate for me. And I'm telling you, when you look at it, I can say to you, without any doubt, we have 29 new candidates, first time. No understanding now. That may include people like Dayton Campbell, it may include Damian. It may include Imani Duncan. It may include Victor Wright. It may include Aris Daly. It may include Julia. It may include Mikhail Phillips. But it is the best team of new candidates, 30, the best, most qualified, most prepared, most patriotic, the best team of political representatives ever coming forward in Jamaica. It has people on it like Andre Harton, doctor, professor at the university, young upcoming professor. It has people coming forward in it like waver lines, not only world class cricketer, but a leader still in representation in West Indies cricket. It has people in it like Lothan Cousins, Brilliant young lawyer, businessman yeah. out in a Carindan. It has people in it like Dr. Walton Small, former principal of Ulmas, head of Issa. It has people in it like Dr. Dwayne Spencer. It has people in it like Dr. Kirk Wall, another university graduate. It has people in it like Zulika Jess, brilliant young lawyer out in the Central Carolina who may say no matter what. It has a brilliant teacher, Mark Malab, in the Western St. Thomas, principal of Yellow High School. And, and it's having it. I can't call all the names. 
is that Valerie Nita Robertson, QC, Queen's Council, running, running in Western Portland. I can't call all the names, but I tell you, it has in it. It has in it. It has in it one of the most qualified, prepared Jamaican patriots, Comrade Dr. Winston Kelly. And I'm going to ask him to step up. Yeah, the story, you know, you know, the back of the day when you, you have a man in cup or champs, 
Yeah. Like, well, you know, you want to see beside your girl, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So we wait till I get up and go back to the sun. And you come back and you see a man in the seat. And you sit up and say, yo, tell the girl that you said, we come for the seat. So here I go. Let me take the seat, draw the him go and sit down by the box. Set. I came on ground and I'll tell you, I could not have had more support than from Comrade Fitz, who took me by the hand from the onset. And I assure you, if there is ever a need, I call, he always answers my call. And I really appreciate that for my But just before we came on ground, of course, uh, Comrade Katie Knight was here earlier. I'm not so sure he's still here. But I sat with Comrade Katie in his living room, how we run them with it. And what I thought would have been 20 minutes ended up being two hours. It reminded me of one of my medical examinations at the university. Yes. At the end of which he stood up. Comrade Winston, you ready? Yes. And so, comrades, I'm here to tell you that I've landed on the ground with an excellent team. Six weeks has become like six years. My new family, and I love you all. Yes. Comrades, I now have a team which I'm blending together and if you think it was hot when Comrade Arnold Brown reached out and pledged his support that's where we will start to see and comrades if you think the seed pressure is more pressure we all put out comrades last but not least uh, for she, she's closest to me in this room and only today we're driving around Portmore and she says to me, I love politics. Yeah. That's it. I want to thank her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, my campaign manager, I don't see Mayor Keen, I'm sure he's outside standing up. Winston Keen. Yes, Winston who's been very supportive in ensuring that we're on touch ground every day of the coming ground. And so comrades, I know it's been a long evening and I really want to tell you all that I love you all and we look forward to taking it from the brotherhood. I want to have to go again. Come it down.